Good morning. It's me again from Don Winter from Panama Guide. Uh, I wanted to do another uh, video this morning uh, and I'm going to be talking about Panama Teak Forestry investing in teak, plantation teak in Panama. Okay, here's the plan. I've got my notes here. I've got 10 points made up that I want to cover and I am going to be limiting myself to one minute per point so that hopefully uh, if I spend about a minute or so on the lead in and one minute per point and then I should end up with about a 12 minute long video more or less that's my goal let's see how it works and uh, let's see if these things take more or less as I'm going through them okay first point confidence inspiring management is the bullet uh, Jeff Duda is the president of Panama Teak Forestry I've known him personally he's a friend of mine I've known him for years and um, here in Panama, the, the crooks and the scam artists um, always try to come down here and prey off of people. Um, I've put a couple of them in jail, specifically Richard Cover um, was trying to rip people off up in the Coronado area. A guy named Jeffrey Moen came down here, stole $50 million from people. And because of my website and tips from my readers, those guys are now in prison. They'll be there for a long time. So I know the difference. I mean, I know I, I, I know Jeff. I know him personally. He's a friend of mine, and he, he, he's, they, they operate in a very transparent manner. He's a straight-up guy, straight shooter. I trust him, and, uh, and I, I, uh, I endorse Jeff Duda and his operation, which is uh, unusual because he's, uh, uh, he's, he's one of the guys that you can, you can count on. He's not going to screw you over. That's important, especially down here in Panama. All right, the second point is that uh, Panama Teak Forestry is not a new operation. It's not a startup. They've already they've been doing this for like going on 10 or 11 years now. They've already got 70 investors. They've, it's, it's not something where they're just saying, hey, come on down and give us your money and we're going to go do this and it'll pay off in 25 years. They've already been at it for a long time. They've already got uh, 750 land or hectares of land purchased. They've already got 550 hectares planted. They've got a sawmill built. They've got a kiln built. Um, it's they're they're running sheep and cattle underneath the uh, underneath the trees. Uh, it takes 25 years for a tree to mature, um, but you can do things like go out and buy something that was planted 15 years ago and then manage it, provide that professional management, run the trees through your mill, and then you get that profit center. So um, they're embarking on an expansion program, but the fundamental point remains that a lot has already been done it exists it's there you can see it okay point number three is that the uh, the, the company is is currently in my estimation undervalued that uh, Jeff uh, only is 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 adding or counting on the the value of the land that they've already purchased the 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 value and the value of the trees that are planted and growing and the value of those logs if you cut them all down throw them in containers and ship them off to India there's a lot of things in there that are not figured, being figured into the share price yet right now. For example, the sawmill and the kiln and the value of the lumber when you process it, your, process it yourself and turn it from a log into lumber or furniture or whatever else and then ship it out of the country. So there's a big kind of almost like an inverted pyramid. While well, you're down here right now where it's like, yeah, okay, here's the things that we can touch. This is the land and the trees and the cattle and the trucks and these are the things that we can count on. However, you've got this woof value that's going to be growing out and expanding uh, based on the value of the lumber and that's not figured into the value of the company right now. Okay, point number four. The, uh, the value of this investment goes up guaranteed steady about 12% a year, 1% a month or so uh, over time based on the fact that the trees are growing. If you put your money into gold and you want your, if you want the value of your gold to go up, you have to hope that the price of gold goes up. If you buy an ounce of gold and put it on a table a year later, it's an ounce of gold. That doesn't happen with teak. The trees are growing and they're getting bigger. Uh, they grow, as a matter of fact, by a amount of 12 cubic meters of wood per year per hectare. So you're getting more and more wood every year. It's growing just like clockwork. Um, and the wood is what's valuable. So it's predictable. You know, you know it's going to go, and it's just getting bigger, and, and, and off they go, and there's no, uh, oh, and that value is also figured into the price per share. So last month you could have bought a share for one thousand one hundred seventy-eight dollars. Now it's up to one thousand one hundred eighty-nine, one percent up from last month to this month. 
That's the way they do it. Point number five, recession proof. Here's the thing, these trees are just down there in the, in, the, in, the, in the plantation growing. They don't care if Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they don't care about deficits, they don't care about the stock market, they don't care about political wrangling in the White House or between Congress or what have you. They're, it's, 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 it's the ultimate recession-proof investment because the trees are gonna grow just like clockwork, they're getting bigger no matter what, and the, the value of teak as a commodity is also going up over time. So you have trees growing, you've get more wood over time, and it's also more value. So you can relax. You don't have to sit there and watch the stock market every day and wonder what's my investment doing or what's my what's my what's my 401k or you know or are those guys gonna screw me? You don't have to worry about that. You can just chill out and forget about it and know that it's getting more and more valuable over time in a substantial manner. It's relaxing. There's my minute. Okay, what happens if you have an emergency? What if you need to get cash back right now? You put money into this company and you're like, all right, I'm gonna invest some money in Plantation Teak in Panama. What happens if the dog blows up or for whatever reason, you need cash back right now? The company has a, 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 a buyback program where they will buy your shares back from you at, let me get this right the first time, it's 10% less uh, than what the share value was at the purchase point. Okay, so if you invest um, $50,000, let's say 10% less would be $5,000. Okay, so if you wait, because it, it goes up by 1% per month. So if you just wait 10 months, then your share value has gone up by 10%. So then you've covered that buyback penalty thing, okay? If you hold on to it for three years, then your $50,000 investment is now worth about $70,000. But then if you like, oh, I gotta you know, execute this buyback thing, then you're gonna get hit with the, five, the same $5,000 penalty, which is the 10% based on your purchase price. So anyway, that's how that works. And there is a way to get out quickly. You can always sell the shares to somebody else if you want to, sell them yourself and off you go. Okay, point number seven, land values are going up. Panama Teak Forestry has 750 hectares of land, 550 of that is planted in its teak. But when they're buying land, they're always looking at the value of land for per, per possible future value increase. So they buy land, for example, okay, this is great land for teak, but it's also near the beach. Well, there's no infrastructure right now. It's in a remote area. It's not really good for you know any kind of a residential or a touristic development right now, but that might change in 25 years. You're planting teak, the teak's growing, it's getting bigger. And uh, 25 years from now, that land, which was only good for teak, now maybe there's a highway in there, or maybe there's a new airport, or maybe somebody else is building some kind of a thing. So maybe that, that value of land might, might go up. Uh, there's one parcel of land that they bought. When they bought it, it was $4,000 a hectare. Now the land in that area is $10,000 a hectare. So that land in just like six years has already more than doubled in value. So that's something that they look at when they're picking out land. All right, point number eight, it's good for the environment. Uh, I just did another video not too long ago talking about carbon sequestration of teak, which is interesting because carbon is basically like a reverse engine. Gasoline engines put carbon dioxide into the air, trees pull it back out. So these trees are, are sequestering huge amounts of carbon every year. Um, also, Jeff is like Mr. Tree Hugger. I mean, I actually have a picture of him hugging a tree. Um, he does everything that everything that the company does and everything that their strategy and their mindset is what's good for the environment, what's good for the land, what makes the land more healthy, can we do it in an organic manner, can we recycle something, can we um, even things like let's ride cow or let's ride horses instead of using ATVs or motorcycles to go out, you know, because it's, it's, you know, tr cows reproduce, you know, they, I mean, horses reproduce. So they're also not burning gas. So everything, it's a, it's a very, very, very green, and environmentally sound and environmentally friendly operation. So that's important as well. Point number nine, cows and sheep. When, uh, when Jeff started this up, the conventional wisdom was, oh, you can't run cattle and you can't run sheep underneath your trees because they're gonna compact the soil, they're gonna eat the trees, they're gonna screw it up, it's not good, the trees won't do as well. Well, instead of just accepting that conventional wisdom, Jeff said, all right, tell you what, let's set up an experimental area, let's run cattle in there, let's run sheep in there, let's figure out how to do this. And they figured out that, yes, you can. You can run cattle, both cattle and sheep, underneath the trees, and uh, they won't hurt the trees. It's actually good for the trees. The trees love it, they're growing great. And then you do other things with uh, uh, organic methods, and what you end up with is organic, organic uh, beef and lamb and mutton. 
um, and that's also the herd is continuing to grow so you end up with another uh, uh, profit center for the entire operation last point the the production and the exports are about to commence for the first time in the history of this company the they're they're yeah, right at the point you know just trying to get that electricity turned on for the kiln and then once that starts and the kiln starts running and the wood goes in they've already got you know wood cut to fill up a couple of containers and then the exports start the wood gets sold and then the cash flow flips from because up until now all of the money has been going into they take investors money and they spend it so it's been nothing getting produced only now they've got trees and a mill a sawmill and a kiln about to begin to produce the lumber and actually turn that cash flow around and then it becomes profitable so um this is you know a, a point in the in the in the flow of the development of the company which is a a, a great time to get in okay so anyway that's it uh, the bottom line it's a good time to get in it's a good deal the math and numbers are excellent panama teak forestry is an established company operates in a transparent manner they're professionally managed by confidence inspiring professionals and individuals like jeff duda uh, if you want more information send me an email uh, to don at panama-guide.com you can call my uh, magic jack number in the u.s which is area code 845-514-9893 it's been acting up a little bit lately i'm not sure if i can call out right now or not but you can call me on it also there's my cell phone in panama you have to dial the international access 011 country code is 507 my number is 6614-0451, but the best way to get a hold of me is through my email address. Uh, and then if you do that, then I'll uh, put you in contact with the guys at the company and send you more information, and, um, you know, off you go. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.